Hi guys, real quick uh, introduction and or public service announcement slash disclaimer. Uh, this video is a little bit short and that is because it is just a diagnostic uh, introduction video to this car. There was a lot of complaints on this thing and I had a lot of stuff to go through. Uh, many decisions had to be made. So uh, what I have done is I have segmented the, uh, the Diag video as uh, as one video and then the full length uh, repair video is going to be the next segment uh, if you don't want to watch the diag just skip all the way to the end of this video and you will see a link to the second primary video at the end screen you will also find a link up at the top of the page a link down in the video's description and there will also be another link in the pinned comments of this video and that will take you forward in time to the actual repair segment opening z hood Hello everybody, good day to you. Welcome back. Glad you guys are here. I am super glad to be here. This is a 2010 Range Rover Land Rover Sport. It has 112,171 miles on the odometer. Restarting the engine. All right. No check engine light, just that uh, service required. And the vehicle lean when cornering. Yeah, yeah, I, I'm, I'm gonna have to research that. I have no idea what that's about. I guess it leans too much uh, while cornering. Maybe something like that. So I'm going through my list here. We've got a front suspension clunking grinding noise when braking or going over speed bumps. Okay. We want to do some transmission service action, front and rear differential services. Uh, I understand that the spare tire holder is broken. To something about a door lock. We'll check that out later. Yeah, we're going to be all over the place with this thing. Let's go out and uh, take her for a test drive real quick, like, and. Uh, see how she feels how she runs all that good stuff and then we'll uh we'll create a path of repair moving forward oh this thing is supercharged it feels fast yeah this is fast all right so i'm a little bit off the beaten path here uh, this road's kind of rough it's just asphalt and I i'm really not hearing that suspension sound anymore i heard it in the parking lot back at the shop but now i do not Let's, uh, let's get out of here and flip back around. Try to find some uh, some rougher road than what I've got so far. Because I'm, I'm not uh, I'm not recreating it all of a sudden. And that bothers me. Bing, I know, warning, cornering. Got it. Okay, so when we came through here the first time, I was going like 25, 30 miles an hour over those tracks. Let's go a little slower this time. Let's see if I can't hear the noise. Yep. Right now, I didn't hear it. It's not okay. So since this is an English car, what uh, what can I use to express frustration? It's it's not crikey, because that's not, we're not Australian. If this was a Holden, I could get away with crikey. Uh, what do the British say? What do you guys say? Uh, let's drive around this truck. I'm gonna cut him off, because he's going right here next. Uh, but yeah, what are the what are the British going to say to express uh, uh, frustration and disapproval? I, I just don't know. I mean, do we just use English words, or do do, we, do you guys have some slang words? Crikey, because I can't I can't use the the German phrases. I need a I need an English phrase for these English built vehicles. They build these in England, right? Still, yeah, maybe. Is it blimey? Is that what it is? Blowing me. Can I can I call it a wanker? <laughs> How about that one? Wanker. That one's pretty good. I'll, I'll call it a wanker. It's this uh, this, this Range Rover is a wanker. This is beautiful. Anyway, let's pull this thing on into the shop. Yeah, let's do a little bit of research. See what's going on with it. Supercharged. I knew it. Yeah, that's the big motor. Five liters of V8 power with the supercharger. Love forced induction. There she is. That's a big unit. So I'm making more steam. Now let's see if my scanner tool is going to talk to this thing. Let's see what the suspension modules tell us. Scan tool powering on. Beep. Oh, there's our connector. What is this? Tracking device. Plug that guy in. There we go. Restarting the engine. 
There we go. I only had to tell it twice this time. Okay, scrolling, scrolling, scrolling. Land Rover, Land Rover, Range Rover. Satellites linking up. Automatic ID. Come on, computerizer. 2010 Land Rover, Range Rover, Sport, 5 liter V8, supercharged. Let's go ahead and code scan all of the modules. We'll get a uh, holistic evaluation of what's going on with this truck. Holy smokes. There's codes everywhere. Look at this. Air intake temp sensor number one out of range. Cylinder misfires on one, two, three, five. Okay, seven and eight. What? Odd that it's got all these codes and no check engine light. Catalyst efficiency. This is this is redonkulous. Why are all these codes here? Hang on. I'm just gonna I'm just gonna leave that alone for now. Let's let it go through its list. Scrolling along, got a P300, random multiple misfires. P316 misfire detected on the first thousand revolutions. That's on startup. Catalytic converter efficiency. Evap system small leak. What? This thing's killing me. There's 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 a lot going on here. Fan performance P0483. Uh, there it is. P0526 fan speed sensor circuit. Let's see. A U code lost com with speed control module. Fuel rail pressure low while cranking. Hmm. ABS codes, what? This, there's so much going on here. Active dampening control module, here we go. Left uh, rear damper solenoid. That may be our uh, our ride height warning indicator message right there. Body control module. I don't even know what that is. Wheel module, okay. Uh, front left wheel module sensor transmitter assembly. I, I, I think we're talking about uh, tire pressure monitor here. These cannot all be current codes. This is, this is something special. Like, somebody messing with me? Did you guys like unplug all your modules just to set these codes to screw with me? Is that what's going on here? Lin bus fault. Power steering solenoid control circuit. Why? It's the clock, really? The clock module? Okay. Another network failure. I, I don't... I don't even know where to start. Let's let's just pretend we didn't do this and look the other way. Let's, let's just do that because I don't e I don't even know where to start with this. Do we do we go with what we know and start with the engine and do we clear everything and see what comes back? Hmm. Okay. Okay. So I've referred back to my list and we've got a Blues Clues here. Uh, something. Oh yeah, yeah. The leaning. Uh, the leaning message on the dash started uh, while they were on a road trip. They drove over something and hit the bottom of the car, and that's when the message showed up. So perhaps there's physical damage down there. This is good. Uh, there's another bullet point here. Door locks. The left rear side door uh, tries to hold people hostage, prisoner inside of the car. You can't open it from the inside and outside unless you lock and unlock the entire vehicle. It's embarrassing. I'm sorry for the in-laws. Okay, so let's verify that. That's, that's one. So we've got... Got power locks going on here. These ones are working. That one's working. Uh, this one, that one's working. But it looks like our left rear is not working. See that? There's no action coming out of the lock. It's unlocked. It's locked. And I didn't see it moving when I actuated the locks. Okay, I'm gonna hit the lock button. We're gonna see if that thing tries to move. Oh, okay, it did try to move. That tells me that the two wires that power the actuator and the door are functioning. Uh, I highly suspect that there's a failed actuator, a lock solenoid inside the left rear door. So we got a semi-confirmed kill on that one. Moving on through our list. Where's the list? All right, so here's the plan. Here's what I'm gonna do. To avoid uh, any kind of information overload, we're gonna, we're gonna stick with the topic at hand and that's gonna be the suspension warning thing. I'm going to lift this thing up. We're going to take a look at the uh, undercarriage and the suspension and see if we can't identify any damage that may have occurred when they hit an object on the interstate. Uh, then 
after that i think what i'm gonna do is is clear these trouble codes and give this thing a fresh new palette to start with uh, these misfires they could just be a result of the higher mileage and lack of uh, engine maintenance uh, i understand there has not been much work done to this car in the past several years uh, so i who knows how long these codes have been here i, I don't so i think I think we're just gonna have to go through this thing one at a time on this list and and just kind of go from there working our working from easiest to hardest one thing i would like to do though is verify that the uh pneumatic ride control system does function so let's give this uh let's give this thing some down and it should let the uh, air ride down let's see what it does oh we're going I, I felt it go down okay so it did uh it did adjust its ride height let's go check and see if all four corners are uh, synchronized or not yeah it looks good it's level let's check this side over here looks good it's level okay all right let's see if it will uh if it'll go back up raising the auto yep i hear the pump i felt it move pump's going okay Okay, so I just did a little bit of reading and we need to put this thing in off-road mode at its fullest ride height in order to uh, to lift this thing off the ground. Uh, if we do not lock it into off-road mode, then uh, what it's going to want to do is it's going to want to compensate for the ride height once the lift starts to take uh, the weight of the vehicle. And we don't want it to do that. And I believe... Yeah, we went up some. Okay, so we are in ride height or lift mode. I'm gonna go ahead and power this down again. Phew. Let's get it up in the air and give it a visual looky-loo down below. Okie dokes, I've got the rack set. Let's go ahead and lift it up. Black subscribe button. We have contact. Let's check our lift points. Make sure we're safe. Nothing's being crushed. That lift arm's not right. Redo. Scoot that over some. That's good. Back up. Okay, let's take a look down here at what's going on. They. They said they hit something and that's when the uh, the warning message came on. I don't see any damage back here. Let's see, where's our sensor? There's our height sensor right there. It's uh, this little arm and the linkage that connects it to the control arm. That's actually the sensor right way up there. See that guy there? There should be one on each wheel for ride height. Yep, there's one. Okay, no damage there. Let's go ahead and move on forward here. Mm. Ride height sensor. I don't know. Oh, look at, oh, that's a brake pad. It's a brake pad wear indicator. That's not supposed to be rubbing on the rim. See that? That thing's just hanging out right there. That's not supposed to do that. Where's my, my front ride height sensors? I don't see you. Hmm. Well, here's something I noticed that isn't right. Another brake line that's not routed in the correct position. This is supposed to be on this side of the sway bar. See how it's pinched and bent over? That is, uh, that's kind of not okay. So that's, that's routed improperly, so I probably need to just remove this sway bar link to uh, put it on the other side of that line. That's not okay. We've got this thing going on over here. Again, not okay. It's not the end of the world. Ah, here we go. Here's a ride height sensor. There's one of them. It's plugged in. Okay, let's check the other side, see if that's there. And that one looks connected. Okay. Hmm. It's going to take a lot of research. I, I don't know if I have the uh, the knowledge and background to, to service this vehicle in the capacity that uh, that they're looking for. I just don't have that much exposure to these things. Let's see. Here's our pump. That's for the uh, the air ride system. Looks like our control circuits. This is the broken spare tire crank that they told us about. I, I guess somebody used an impact gun to run this up and down once upon a time. And now it's stuck, so they probably sprung the cable inside. That was on the list. Okay. Hmm. All right, time to let this down. There's no uh, no obvious damage other than that uh, 
those improperly stalled parts. No suspension damage, I should say. Coming down. What to do? All right, I'm back inside. I just restarted it, and believe it or not, I actually felt kind of a shudder on, on restart. Uh, I'm wondering if those misfires are a little more valid than I gave them uh, credit for earlier. We could have uh, we could have some original spark plugs in this thing, but there's there's definitely stuff going on. Here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna clear all the codes. We're gonna shut her back down, and uh, we're gonna see what repopulates and kind of go from the uh, the first failure codes and just move on through the list. There's there's way too much stuff here to unpack in, in one sitting, so uh, I've got to remove some of these DTCs and just start over with like a fresh pallet here, fresh canvas, vehicle leaning, yeah. Okay, I moved on to the ride height control module and I've got some measurements here. We've got 42 millimeters for the left front. We've got 58 millimeters for the right front. The rear, let's see, left rear is at 44 millimeters, see that right there? And the right rear is 68 millimeters. So I'm pretty sure that that discrepancy is, uh, is what our issue is. I'm going to look and see if I can't uh, perform some kind of a relearn on this maybe. Perhaps that is the uh, the issue. Maybe they hit something and it it, uh, it jarred one of the sensors. I don't know if I have a special function ability to, to actually access that to perform that function. But uh, what I would, like I said, what I would want to do is do a relearn and see if we can't recalibrate the ride height system. Uh, perhaps that's all that it needs. Here we go, functional tests. That should be special functions. It should be in here. Up, uh, air suspension height calibration. This is what we're looking for. All right, I'm gonna proceed and just see how far this goes. Okie doke, so I've gone ahead and backed this thing out. The ride height reprogramming procedure has failed. It is not, uh, it's not gonna initiate the sequence, so I, I'm afraid I do not have the capacity to service this complaint. I'm gonna have to, uh, have to decline service on that. However, there are a few knickknacky items that I, I do believe that I, I do have the ability to, to handle, and one of which is gonna be the door lock thing. Uh, I kinda wanna look into that misfire that it's getting, that shutter, especially on startup, I wanna look into that. I think that's just some uh, engine performance issues, uh, not a huge problem for me. And there's some maintenance items that we wanted to go over as well. Um, I feel very defeated that I'm just not capable of, uh, of diagnosing this, uh, this ride height issue. Uh, anyway, I'm gonna go ahead and put all this stuff together. I'm gonna let my owners know what's going on with it, what I can do, what I can't do, and we're gonna see what they wanna do. So let me go ahead and get this all worked up and uh, then uh, we'll, uh, I'll pick this video back up when I have some word on what kind of direction we're gonna go in.